and then they'll go to the portfolios and then they'll get to mine and they'll say, well, whose is this? Wow, this is great. And then I'll say, it's mine. And they'll say, it's yours. And I'll say, yeah. And then they'll say, you, you did this. And it, that really kind of frustrates me because it happens so often. I just, I guess I don't really fit the, the picture of what they're expecting. So I feel like, what am I retarded or something? Yeah, that's my work right there. And uh, a guy had come into the shop and was looking through photo albums, chose the artist through the photo album, and then when he found out it was a girl, he didn't want to get tattooed, you know? He changed his mind, and he's like, no, I don't want to get tattooed by no chick. And I'm like, that's fine. Go ahead and get somebody else. And then he's like, well, I want the person who did this. And I said, well, that's chick, <laughs> you know? So <laughs> um, then he tried to beg me to do it, and I said, well, the thing is, is here you tell me you don't want to get tattooed by me, and then when you find out it's my work, then you expect me to go ahead and sit down and be comfortable tattooing you. So I didn't tattoo him and sent him out the door. The odd thing is, is we'll have people come in here and ask us, do you tattoo guys? <laughs> We're like, well, do you walk into a guy shop and ask them if they tattoo women? But it does seem like maybe there's a little less of a stigma about a woman tattoo artist now than when I started. So I would say there are a lot more women tattoo artists and there are a lot more people open to the idea of getting tattooed by a woman. Some people actually feel more comfortable with a female tattooer, especially, you know, female clients who haven't been tattooed before. I also believe that girls have a lighter hand. Actually, it's been wonderful because there aren't a lot of female tattoo artists and it's a very positive response from clientele. Women are more comfortable to get tattooed by a female, especially if it's in a, a little risque area in the hip or lower back even. Sometimes it would be uncomfortable to go to a male artist. And guys are comfortable to go too because then they don't feel like they have to be all macho necessarily. And we can uh, have girl talk, so to speak, even with the guys. Uh, so we try to keep girls in every shop if we can. You know, we have a couple women in each shop, at least. And then you've got the possessive husbands, yeah, boyfriends that won't let a man touch right. their girlfriends or wives. Right, especially in the private area, they don't, you know, anywhere private, they don't want a, another man. Right. And then if it's a guy that wants to get his private areas tattooed, you know, midsection kind of, they would rather have, have a, girl. a girl, right? But I think like as far as being a female tattoo artist, there's there hasn't been any doors closed to me at all. You know, people are like, oh, is it so hard to be a female? No, it hasn't been hard at all for me. When I first started tattooing, there was virtually no women tattooing. Now there's lots of them, and I think it's going to equalize. I think it's going to be a 50-50, just the same as the business. You know, we tattoo 50-50, you know, half men, half women. There's no lopsidedness anymore. Well, I don't know back then if it was, I'm sure back then it wasn't as, as it is now that women, there's so many, so much more women tattoo artists and they do amazing work. And, you know, I, I love that the industry that, that the women are able to express themselves like in artistically in the tattoo community, like the men, and be respected as well, you know. That's really cool. So the last four years, I think it's just been she and I. Oh, heavenly. <laughs> sort of sometimes, you know, she's the night shift, I'm the day shift still, so. Uh, but it's, it's great, we feed each other creatively and, you know, what, it's, a, it's a kind, nice environment to work in. We're pretty lucky. So I decided that after I moved in here, I would not, I would just hire women because it seems to work out better as far as being able to share and communicate. And we all kind of give and take and we share with each other instead of trying to compete, which is really nice. It's like a big relief. Trying to compete, which is really nice. It's like a big relief. Going all custom was just a the next logical step because as a tattooist I always kind of drew for people and drew my own style of roses. I didn't want to do uh, the same thing that had been done 150,000 times before. Not some store-bought image. Not a, an air freshener from Hot Topic with the butterfly and the tribal bit. You know, that can't be a tattoo anymore. There were these offensive 
little sheets of flash that said, for the ladies. <laughs> they were cherries, little butterflies, and cheesy little daisies, you know, and just really ugly stuff, you know, so I thought these are not for the ladies. The ladies can have dragons. If the lady wants a dragon, she can have a dragon. If she needs a phoenix, she can have a phoenix, you know, but there, there was that mindset in the male tattoo artists that women would only want these little jewelry bits, you know. I like doing things that look realistic, uh, black and gray stuff, making things look like a black and white photo. That's how I picture things. When it starts getting into color, to me, that's, that's a whole nother level of difficulty. Anything colorful, uh, anything uh, girly, <laughs> anything um, feminine. I like fantasy art. I like... Um, I also like traditional designs, um, American traditional. Um, so I really, I mean, it's just a variety of, I like to do. I just, I'm not, I'm not crazy about the black and gray. It's just not me, you know. I like to work in realism. I like to do portrait work. I like to do like wildlife and things. But I also like to do stuff that's real organic and flowing. So like I don't mind Celtic work even though other people think that it's crazy or like a cross between like a Celtic style and a tribal style or something, you know, that intertwines and you know, maybe a little Art Nouveau-ish. I like that sort of style. It's interesting to me to see how good the tattoos have gotten now and I can't even imagine where they're going to go, you know? Yeah. You know, in the world of tattooing, how our only role models really have been men. Which is not a bad thing. I think it's good. I think it's great. Except, uh, yeah, I just think there's room for all of us and to, for maybe the male orientation to keep an open mind about what women have to offer the business instead of kind of have a line linear way of thinking like, oh, it has to be this way. In reality, it can embrace, you know, many other facets of being in the world. Julie Moon, Megan Hoogler, Carrie Barba. Actually, Carrie Barba is definitely one of them. Vivian Lazonga, yeah, Mick Beasley. I have to say, of course, the women I work with. So Ruby Santiago and Vivian Lazonga, absolutely. And Melissa Thompson. Oh, I worked at Suzanne Fowler's shop once. I worked with Julie Moon back in the early 90s. Dina Lippins, who's running this show. Julie Moon is up in New Hampshire in that area. I've worked with Mary Jane Hockey from Portland, Oregon. I've worked with um, Mary Skyver, who's from Somerset, PA. That was at this show. Uh, Holly Azara, who I love. I met Sharon Browse, and she introduced me to Suzanne Fowler and Pat Sinatra. Her name is Hannah Atchison. I met her at um, Cocoa Beach Tattoo Convention at the, like two years ago. And she's just amazing. Like, I, I admire her. Actually, the first time I'd ever met or ever seen a picture of Sophia, uh, it was like right when I first started tattooing, I think right 2001. And uh, I said, man, that's, that has got to be one of the most beautiful women I have ever seen in my life. I sure did. What picture did you see? It was in a magazine. It was like, it was in some magazine at a convention. You had a camera. You had a, you had a camera. You a were blonde, winking. Blonde hair. No, you had dark hair. You were winking at the camera and you were showing this tattoo. And first of all, I was like, that's one of the coolest tattoos I've ever seen. And second of all, I was like, God, she is so hot. Then I finally realized who she was. I was like, this is like one of the, you know, founders of tattooing in this area you know, started, you know, she's been through the whole grit. And at the time, my apprentice was really difficult, I'd say more so emotionally than it was anything else. So I was like, man, this, this is this hard for me. And I'm with quote unquote friends that are teaching me how to tattoo. Then it had to have been really hard for uh, a woman to come up in that time when it was a, only a man's world. Like there was no Kat Von D back then. You know, having been able to work in a shop like this has changed me. It's hard. I guess it's like, you know, how Big Red felt like when he was hanging out with Elvis. I mean, I don't want to get too, you know, my nose might be a little brown right now, but I don't want to get too crazy. But it's like, it's kind of like that, I think. You know, like Big Red, I'm sure, was like, oh, that's just Elvis Presley. That's just, he eats banana sandwiches. He leaves big old fat ones in the toilet bowl.
That's Elvis Presley. He don't care, you know? But it's like, so, I, I'm sh- but I'm sure when he sat down and really thought about what was happening, he was like, damn, that's the king of rock and roll right there. Thank you, baby. I love that. <laughs> Our bonding tattoo. We finally got one. We were wanting to get one for a while. Like Librians. Brother and sister Librians. Ta-da! It's the Librionic symbol. <laughs> Librianics. Librianics. We are Librianics. We are the Libras. No, no. Take us your leader. We are the Libras. No, no. <laughs> Where's my Band-Aid, honey? It's always a reminder of what it is that I truly want to do with my life, and that's, that's music. All of my tattoos have to do with music. Uh, I'm married to music. On my back, I have two guitars for my parents, um, who were both musicians. I wanted to include a guitar in with a symbol of, because I do like classical music and softer stuff as well, so um, that's why I wanted to include birds. Stevie Ray Vaughan, the peacock. Then I have a lot of portraits of just music influences. I have Stevie Nicks. The Mike Muir portrait. Dolly Parton. Gigi Allen. and. Um, Prince is my latest one. And Janis Joplin. Janis Joplin's Lyle Tuttle uh, tattoo. The Black Flag. And Metallica. Really psychobilly music, and I, I have a horror pops tattoo on my calf. The Grateful Dead tattoo on the back is notes from Touch of Grey that say, I will get by, I will survive. Give me danger, that's an Iggy Pop reference. I paint rock and roll. First 50 that I've ever painted that I sold out of was John Lennon, so that's why that one's tattooed. The Jimi Hendrix one is coming soon, so I just want to tribute what he's been in my life and just kind of how he's been represented as an icon. It's Dead Boys, and they're my favorite band, and I'm obsessed with music. The Lizard King for Jim Morrison. They all died at 27, it's the reason for 27. Well, it says like lick on my leather. Pretty much means, you know, I'm gonna live my life how I wanna live my life, and I'm tattooing it on my arm so you all know that I'm not changing, I guess. Because when the floodgate broke, yeah. which happened after 1976, when there was a first yeah. really convention, such an amazing experience making this movie because I got to travel around the entire nation and meet all these amazing female tattoo artists. I met a lot of tattoo collectors. I got to um, travel around. I went to tattoo shops. I went to a lot of tattoo conventions and I got to meet a lot of people and see a lot of amazing artwork that's out there. Honey.